Stephen Powell has always been drawn to color and light. Working in glass allows him to capture the natural colors of Kentucky, the blues of the sky, gold and reds of the fall, and pinks of spring. Color and light melting together in gem-like luminosity that provides a moment of wonder. I thought it was a great idea. I'm not, uh, I know, um, I mean, the whole, co we, we have a piece or two in other, other hospitals, and I've always liked that idea that it's sort of, uh, you know, art is healing or, or therapeutic, or I know it is for me. I, you know, I don't know that it is for everybody, but uh, I think what uh, University of Kentucky did is it's certainly unique. I don't know of any other uh, situation where there's so much art uh, you know that that, that um, you know it's almost like it's designed around the art in certain ways, and and I'll be interested to hear how uh, you know patients react to it. When I was going through graduate school in, in uh, a glass program, it, it was almost like you weren't su supposed to make uh, beautiful objects. You know, you're supposed to make something more controversial or you know social statement or something like that but I've always approached my glasswork as beautiful objects and so I think um, uh, seeing beauty to me is, is uh, kind of healing, makes me feel better. You know, even if I'm not feeling bad it can make me feel better so like I guess if it's in a situation where people are feeling bad maybe it can at least make them feel better. Don't turn, don't turn. Don't turn. What do you mean, don't? Oh, yeah, that how's that? Yeah. How are we doing? Yeah. Whoa. I think we set, decided that we were going to try to make a bigger statement than just one piece, so we picked pairs, if I, if I believe uh, a memory serves me correctly. So we had a bunch, I, don't, I can't remember, five or six pairs that, that we had, and, and uh, when we're making a pair of pieces, they don't really, we don't, we don't make them thinking they're going to go with another piece. So we basically went back and looked at a bunch of pieces and picked pieces that seemed to go together, whether it's certainly the size and form, but color also. Go ahead and hit the back. Watch his hand. Well, when we did the the book that uh, University of Kentucky, or, I'm sorry, University Press of Kentucky, put out a few years ago, <clears throat> we had to sort of categorize what we've done. And, and our first series of pieces that uh, were definitely more. Uh, influenced by the human figure, and maybe some vegetation. They were roughly symmetrical, you know, double lobe pieces that, you know, we throw names in them that, that encourage that, that uh, relationship, uh, you know, such as double lobes with cleavage and buns and, you know, things that people can interpret however they like. And then uh, at a certain point, uh, we switched to making asymmetrical shapes. And so we made a whole series of pieces that we called wackos because they were such a it's, it's very wacky process where we not very not traditional glass blowing where we blow the piece out we're attached on another end and we are up in the air hanging it down horizontally and, and uh, you know totally uh, American uh, not not uh, Italian or traditional 
And uh, those are very, uh, very like uh, animal-like, like aardvarks, anteaters, definitely animal-like. And then we, we took those in, in our last series we call screamers, which we then basically took that and went upright back into more of a vessel orientation. They look more like cranes or swan, you know, definitely uh, like animals that could be, you know, screaming, I guess. All right, Stephen, let me cool down just a little bit. formula. Uh, in fact, I'll, I sort of scoff sometimes I hear, you know, of uh, books or, or classes or, or, you know, on color theory. Uh, you, know, you know, are they supposed to teach artists how to pick colors? I, I, I think that's kind of silly. I mean, you can talk about, you know, where colors are on the color wheel or something like that, but, but um, some people just, you know, pick color. I mean, I just pick colors that I think will will uh, work together. Um, it's, it's a little different in glass because you're not just picking the hue or the actual color of the piece, you're also, you have to be familiar with, you know, and other things like saturation, uh, you know, mixing colors across the color. Anyway, uh, but you have to uh, also be aware of how strong the color is in glass. In other words, if I put uh, a certain blue in one part of the piece and, and it doesn't blow out, as much as the other part of the piece, then it may be too dark for that spot, too intense. So you have to really know the density or, or, or strength of the colors too in glass. So it's a little different, uh, a little more to it in, in dealing with, with the colors in glass. Yeah, I mean the teamwork element is, is obvious if, if people come, you know, see us work. Uh, you, you, it would be very limited working alone. So uh, the, the team that I, ha I have assembled right now are, are, are pretty high, you know, they're, they're different skill levels, but uh, I have several that are, that are very skilled. And uh, everything has to happen just right. Sometimes we, we might seem a little short in the studio, uh, but it's gotta happen. I can't, you know, you can't go, oh, bring the, you know, you gotta, I gotta have it now. Because <laughs> when you, you know, open the doors, I mean, the glass is, is moving you know, most of the time. I mean, you, need, you want to work the glass really hot if you can. And uh, so things have to be, uh, you know, all set up and, and work really like clockwork. I've had it described as, as uh, it's like having a baby, the birthing of a baby. I, I don't know how that, <laughs> I haven't been through that one, so I can't, I, I don't feel that much pain, I know, I don't think. I mean, there, there are times where it's hard, and, but, uh, but definitely, uh, Chore choreographed as a as a, a dance. We definitely always listen to music. In in fact, uh, I bet you didn't get much on the recording because I don't think we talk much. Uh, I'd, it'd be I'd be almost curious. We're so focused on what we're doing, and most of our signals between each other are you know like just a nod or a very slight uh, uh, physical gesture. Uh, so we probably didn't really we probably didn't get a lot of uh, audio, but. Uh, we, li we listen to all kinds of, of music and, and that's probably, if, you know, it kind of keeps me young in a certain way because, I mean, we, they love to listen to, of course, the best music ever came out of the 60s and 70s and they all admit that, but, but I do listen to, uh, you know, new music and, and always, we take turns sometimes, you know, who controls the music in the studio, but that's a, it's a real part of, uh, of working together. I mean, the whole, what we do, you know, and for me, it's not, um, I don't know, it's kind of divided into different things. You know, the gallery scene, showing pieces, lighting pieces, that kind of thing is, uh, is one aspect of what I do, but, but for me, it's not the main thing. What, what you saw, being in the studio, making the work is what drives me, uh, you know, as an artist. Um, if I couldn't go back and do that, I'd be totally frustrated and depressed. You know, I'd like to think my work shows that, that we've gone through a lot to get to that piece. You know, I don't know that, I mean, we know we have, we know what goes into the work, and I think that might give it strength. But uh, we definitely have failures. Um, I think from watching us work, you might get a sense that things could 
could go wrong here or there. They almost did uh, today. We, we had a little, tr you know, certain colors react differently to heat, and we, we're always mixing colors. We're not careful, you know, we, if I want a blue and it's too soft and it's gonna cause problems, we use it anyway, because we want that blue. But uh, we definitely, uh, I don't know what percentage, but uh, uh, we learned to deal with disaster and things going wrong. Um, at, at times, though, it's never really easy, but we know we can go to the next piece. You know, we know we're going to get back in the studio. That's the main thing. So we, we may be slightly down if, if we broke the piece, or like, in fact, the piece before we did the piece uh, that, that you filmed uh, was a disaster. You know, we got to the last move and it just wrinkled and collapsed. <laughs> and we were kind of, you know, we're all kind of like, oh, God, you know, and, and slightly depressed, but we you know we can get back in and, and, and we like to think that our best pieces are, are, are yet to come, you know. We're never satisfied with what we have. Okay, a little torch on the back, maybe. Back or on the lift? Uh, the back, I guess. I don't know, maybe the lift right now. The back seems to have blown out pretty far already. I like to think that just seeing the work, um, um, again, brings pleasure to people. Whether they're sick or not, I guess. But I think maybe where it gets, gets more into really having an effect on people would be if they, which I think what is interesting what the University of Kentucky uh, Hospital is doing here is, is not just showing the work, but maybe trying to make people understand what goes into making it. And so, I think sometimes I know when people, hopefully my students, sometimes uh, um, see it and are maybe inspired to do something with their lives, you know, or do something, uh, you know, there, there's just, you, you can create things and, and maybe to understand how, how incredible it is to create something that's your own. And, uh, you know, so I guess more to inspire, not just by, bring joy by looking at the pieces but maybe starting to understand what's involved in making it like you saw the teamwork that's involved in making it you know and my hope is that all those people on my team go out and do their own thing also and they, they feel that incredible sense of uh, creating. <laughs>